Hebrew reads from right to left. The Torah doesn't contain any punctuation, including periods. There are no capital letters. Indeed, there is a Jewish tradition that when God gave Moses the Torah, the five books of Genesis to Deuteronomy, it was dictated as a 304,805 letter sequence. Jewish scribal traditions are firm when it comes to copying a Torah scroll. An error during transcription renders the Torah scroll invalid. There are also patterns which scribes are trained to remember and adhere to. One of these patterns is known as equidistant letter sequencing. This refers to knowing certain letters separated by a certain number of other letters in between. According to tradition, the litmus test for whether a letter has been copied accurately is to enlist a non-Hebrew reader. If he or she cannot distinguish between the original and a copied letter, then the copied text has passed the test. Biblical Hebrew sentence order appears many times in verb, subject, object sequence, although often this is when a vav is attached to the verb as a prefix letter. Basically, this is saying that there are no periods at the conclusions of sentences. A vav often begins a new sentence. You may remember that a vav as a prefix letter acts as our English word and. It combines the two sentences. It is saying, the Israelites entered and Jacob walked to the Pharaoh and the Pharaoh saw him. Other verses in the Bible are in subject, verb, object sequence. Verb conjugation is a fascinating difference between biblical and modern Hebrew. Both rely on creating words as variations of what are called shorshim. A shoresh translates as root in Hebrew. This is a combination of letters, typically three, which carry a basic meaning such as writing or walking. Hebrew builds its vocabulary by building variations of these root combinations. Modern Hebrew has an elegant seven-form diagram, often shown as a menorah. You have likely seen a menorah. It is like a tree with a stem growing upwards. This stem splits left into three branches and right into three branches. There is a central branch. There, seven branches together, like seven days of the week. This elegant design for forms of verbs is called a binyanim. It literally means building. Its left three branches are passive forms of the root meaning. Its right three branches are the active forms. The central branch is the reciprocal reflexive form of that root combination of letters. The extreme branches on the left and right are the simple meanings of the root letter combination. The middle branches represent intensive meanings. The inner branches on left and right represent causative meanings. See how elegant this design is? The branches are labeled with titles that indicate how you conjugate that root letter combination at the stem into a particular branch. Here are the labels. You would notice clearly in the Hebrew, but not when you hear the labels, that these labels are all variations of a three-letter combination. The combination is in the sequence Pe Ein Lamed. However, you may remember from an episode one that the letter Pe is one of these letters with a hard or soft sound. Its soft sound is F. Its hard sound is P. The reason why the labels sound different is that other letters are being added, along with certain vowels. The label is simply depicting exactly what letters and vowels are to be added in order to conjugate whatever three-letter combination or shoresh you are dealing with. The simple passive is 
ni fall. The intensive passive is pu'al. The causative passive is hu fall. Then the central branch is heat pa el. The causative active is he feel. The intensive active is pl. The simple active is pa al. That's modern Hebrew conjugate, conjugation. Biblical conjugation is much simpler. There are two conjugation forms. One refers to an ongoing event, like a process. The other is more like a singular event. The difference lies in whether the event is spread over a longer period of time. The English Bibles often translate the ongoing event form into future tense. The singular event is customarily translated into past tense. Some words we would see in English are typically left out in Biblical Hebrew. Even though there is a Biblical word, to be, we don't typically see its conjugated form. For example, in English we would write, I am American. In Hebrew, we would write, I American. Make no mistake, though, that the Hebrew, that the verb to be plays a central part in God's name, known as the Tetragrammaton. It also relates to Eve's actual Hebrew name. Eve is the Greek-English translation. The verb to be appears conjugated in future form sometimes. Another word used in English, but not written in Hebrew, is the indefinite article marker. We use the word an. We say an apple or a rock. Hebrew doesn't use the word a or an. You simply write the noun which would come after it. There are two genders, masculine and feminine. There are also two forms, singular and plural. Adjectives appear after the nouns they are describing. The adjectives must also match the gender and number, singular or plural, of the nouns they are describing. 